This video is based on a true story. These stories are based on real life incidents. Please respect the family and friends of individuals featured on this channel. Remember to be courteous in your comments. Many details of these true stories are gory and frightening. If you do not want to hear these types of details, please do not watch this video series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. This video features a tale that takes place in the remote Alaska mountains near Valdez. Frank Glazer was a woodsman who ran the Black Rapids Roadhouse on the old Valdez Trail and augmented his income by hunting for sheep, caribou, and moose that he sold to the Alaska Road Commission to feed their workers. These were the same road crews that were building the Richardson Highway. It was a warm August day in 1921 when Frank first observed the giant bear. It was very dark and had been wandering around across the river from his roadhouse. He had tried several times to get near the bear for a kill shot, but was prevented by the rushing glacial waters of the river. For safety's sake, he would have to turn back each time. Around a week or so later, Frank heard his sled dogs barking and thought there may be a caribou or a bear nearby. So he grabbed his 30 6 hunting rifle and went outside to investigate. All this ruckus wasn't caused by a bear but by two very large wolf dogs. He tried to chase them off by throwing rocks at them, but they would dodge, but remain. He decided they must not be wild or they would have left, so he tried calling to them. They wagged their tails and came right up to him. He adopted them on the spot. Frank tried to do the right thing and tell everyone he met, but the dog's owners never came to claim them, so he added them to his sled dog team. He dubbed the large dark one Yukon and the other one Red. Yukon lined up immediately as the lead dog and Frank decided to give him a try. Strong and fast, he was a great lead dog on the team. A few months passed and Frank and the dog team were out running down his trap lines and harvesting fur to sell. Frank noticed that a patch of willows had an abnormal amount of frost on them and upon further investigation found out that a bear had denned up for the winter there and the breath from the Bruin was causing the frost on the willows. Frank took a mental note to check it out in the spring to see if it, the den was the one of the big bear that he had been watching in the summer. By early May, the snow was in full retreat from the Alaska range, and Frank decided to go look at the den once again, and brought Red and Yukon along. From a good distance, Frank could see the bear's tracks leaving the den. They were enormous. It must have been the big, dark bear he previously had observed. Frank paused and read the bear sign on the ground. It looked like the big bear headed up the canyon only a few hours ago. This meant the bear had no way out. Frank had the big fella cornered. Frank followed the largest bear tracks he'd ever seen, with its giant claws showing clearly in each track. Yukon and Red pushed the trail ahead of Frank, which concerned him. This bear could easily kill his dogs. As the trio continued up the canyon, it grew narrower, and the giant bear tracks continued in a single direction. The only way out was past Frank and his dogs. Frank could not see, Frank could see the evidence that the bear was trying to get out of the canyon and would climb as high as he could only to slide back down. At last, the hunter and his companions arrived at what Frank knew was the last turn in the canyon. The giant would have to be nearby. They rounded the bend, but no bear. There was no cover in the box canyon, and there was no way out. It was far too steep to climb out, even for a bear. Frank looked down and observed the bear's tracks, crisscrossing and meandering all over, looking for a way out. Frank looked up at one set of the giant tracks, and they led straight up a chute in the canyon. Damn, Frank thought, as he realized the Bruin had found a way out. Slightly more than 30 feet above Frank, the clatter of rocks and ice falling down the chute paused, pushed downhill by the gargantuan bear as it was sliding back toward the bottom on his rear end. Red and Yukon streaked past Frank to confront the bear with Frank yelling for them to stop. The bear offered a perfect shot to his vitals, but the bear, but the dogs were running around it and barking. Frank couldn't get a safe shot without being sure to miss his dogs. The report of the rifle echoed thunderously through the box canyon, and the slug found its mark in the bear's shoulder. 
The bear roared in pain and rage as the, bears, as the dogs continued to attack and frustrate him. Regaining his feet, the massive mauler scanned the area trying to assess what had just happened to him. Before we bring our frightening story to a conclusion, we want to make sure to invite you to help us in our quest to earn 1,000 subscribers. Once we get there, we can monetize our channel and buy much needed equipment and software upgrades to improve our channel quality. If you enjoy our channel, please consider subscribing and please remember to like and share our videos on your social media profiles if you like them. We really appreciate you and now back to our story. The bear beat a hasty retreat back down the box canyon with the dogs in close pursuit, continuing to obscure Frank's shooting opportunities. The three beasts had no more left the canyon much later than they had re-entered it, this time with the bear pursuing the dogs. They were all headed straight toward Frank. Sliding to a stop, Frank's feet slipped out from under him, and straight onto his back he went. He knew the group would be upon him in an instant, but he saw the dogs race past him with the bear hobbling in angry pursuit. The dogs cornered the bear in a flat area of one of the chutes. Red would go around behind the giant while Yukon would dance around in front to antagonize him. All of this commotion distracted Frank too as he bounced the side of, sights of his rifle around trying to dodge his dogs. Frank scooted to one side of the canyon anticipating that the bear might be another retreat in the only direction that he could. Sure enough, the bear ran by, gnashing his teeth in anger and confusion. Frank could see the individual hairs on the bear's hide. He was so close. The bear and the dogs would trade off in a strange game of who was chasing who, and Frank would fire two more deafening shots. The bear was slowing now as Frank's bullets had taken their toll. The bear was bleeding from the bullet wounds as well as the dog bites from several places. The massive bear took a last stand position to face the dogs and that gave Frank an opening to place a shot to the bear's ribs. And the bear collapsed. Lifting his head a few times in defiance, the bear was finally put to rest with a coup de grace shot behind his ear. Frank paused to marvel at how well the dogs distracted the bear the entire time. Frank skinned the giant bear and measured its hide. It squared at 10 feet 8 inches, which means that the bear was nearly 11 feet from the from his nose to the tip of his tail, a true giant. Around June, a Model T pulled up and a blonde-headed man approached from it. He saw Yukon and Red and immediately rushed to embrace them. Frank asked if the man knew those dogs and the visitor affirmed that he did. Elmer lived a ways away on Slate Creek and was mining that area. The dogs were his and protected his family. He proudly announced that they were Victoria Land Dogs, a special local wolf-dog hybrid used for pulling sleds. Frank begrudgingly returned Yukon and Red to their rightful owner. A few years later, Frank acquired his very own set of Victoria Land Dogs for his sled team and refused to sell that giant bear pelt for any amount of money.